the other side done. So all of the rivets tapped in. So those brakes are, there's nothing else I can do with them apart from, as I said, just to shine up where they move there. That's all just to make sure they don't stick on a little bit. That's apart from that, we should be good to go. We're getting all the studs out. Now normally you'd prefer the studs to stay in and the nuts to come off. So it's a little bit grimy down there. We're starting to, to have shafts to start. The back brake back and plate is ready set. As you can see, it's ready to all come out. Um, some of these are just a little bit. The rust has got to them. And I know someone's trying to get sockets and stuff to fit them that they were actually a lot smaller than they should be. They should be 11, 16. Some of them were actually coming in nearly 5 8. So I think I, I have a lot of spare nuts. What I use is head nuts, cylinder head nuts. They're really, really hard nut and they're really sharp um, cut, like so there's really good edges on them and all that. They're real black nut, very hard metal. So I'll go and take off any of them that are bad and I fit head nuts to them. So I'll give them a run in the parts washer. Some more there as well. And uh, I'll clean them up then with a wire wheel on at the drill. And then I'm going to start picking out the ones that I want to replace. Like the likes of him there now is a little bit too far gone, you know. So a nice, a better nut on that. So I'm ready to lift this half shaft. So I'll put this on the tripod and we'll pull out the half shaft. Okay, so the oil pan down is just a drop of oil. So I can wash out, so it's going to get a rag. I can wash out that half shaft in the parts washer. That's the beauty of it. And I can wash out the wheel bearing as well. So we've got our shins there. So just one shin there. I'll measure that and see what thickness it is. The one was definitely in here at some point because uh, that grease is very old. It's a bit milky. But that very steel perfect. That's good news. I did a set of them on the first and 20 and I can tell you once and it was no small job. So brilliant. Okay. Good. A lot more spline than this in the first and 20. So let's get the torch and have a look at the seal. This seal is going to be uh, replaced anyway. Naturally, when you get in this far. But, uh, so that's her there. That's your half shaft inner seal. Ah, yeah. Not too bad. But uh, for the sake of a few euro, we'll uh, replace him. Break back and plate is off now, so give him a bit of a clean up. We've no gasket either side, and that's the way it should be to do supply gaskets for these. But to be honest with you, I prefer to shim up, shim this bearing using metal shim and not using paper gaskets that are going to go squashing, giving you false reading for a while. Okay, so parts washer. Blow out the air gun, parts washer again, blow out the air gun. That's what I find to get all that out. It's a not particularly nice job now. The end of this is in good nick, that's good to see. No signs of it hitting the other half shaft. So, another job I can do is tap out that lad there. I've never taken off one of these, or do I, I don't need to. I'm not, I can replace this back plate if I want. Ugh. It's grimy enough now. I have a new one there. I might replace it since I have a new one there because that is grimy and these are all very bad. So I'll just see. I, oh, I'm fairly sure I have one here. Yeah. So this is the new one. What I like about these, of course, is they look a 
lot. A lot uh, neater. Now this, as you can see, has been storage for a while here, but uh, could be perfect. Just a bit of clean up. Okay, and that's your lad for adjusting your brakes. There. So it seems that this has already been set up. Yeah, I think we'll go with this. Because that is just a little bit grimy. Okay, these are <coughs> nice quality part. I have to give it to them. I'm impressed with that. I've really looked at it now much. So yeah, I think we're going to go with that. So in which case, we do need to get this off so we can get this brake rod out. So I'm going to give him a tap there with a chisel and see if we can get him out. If we can get him out, presume we can get him off. Again, I've never done this particular job before. I don't know, I'll have to clean that down and see does it actually come off? I don't know, maybe it's casted into it. Mind you, that's cast iron and this isn't cast iron, so. Yeah, I'll try and tap him out and see what happens. Right, so I have no choice but to get this off the end so that I can put it through there because that hole in there is just too narrow so what I've been doing is I've been trying to tap out the woodruff key that's in there I've got it loose a little bit so what I'm doing now is I'm tapping down here there you go So, <clears throat> there's our woodruff key, after falling out. So I'll give him a quick clean up at the file, have him ready for going back in, and uh, I'll have a look. I think I've bushings that'll fit around that. I'll tidy it up best I can. There's the brake rod out. I also got the clevis pin that was seized in there out. And uh, here's where the woodruff key taps in. So what you do is, you put your keyway along there, you tap it up to about there, and then you tap in your woodruff key from this side, like that. And that acts as a bit of a wedge. So, that's good. So now, when I clean this up, I can fit it in there. That is the plan anyway. And that part there, a bit of a shop last in there, just quickly. Just to clean it back a bit. And... Uh, what I can do now is start working on this adjuster there just to give everything clean up. These are the studs holding in the half shaft. Got them out yesterday evening. So these need a good clean. And then I'm going to... Got myself a pair of gloves. I was looking for pink ones. They're all out of stock. So I have to make do with black. As I was saying in the video yesterday, I want to start looking at the nuts on the end of these, take off any bad ones, some of them are very rusted, I want to clean up the, the treads and I want to put one or two of these studs back into the half shaft for lining things up, it's very hard to line them up if you don't have the studs sticking out of the axles, you have to line up shims and back and plates and the half shaft itself. So. What I do is I'm going to take off the two worst nuts all together and I'm going to tread them straight into the axle after I clean down the axle and I take out the half shaft seal that's in there. I'll do that this afternoon. I'll show you how that how that's done. It's not it's not hard at all. So some of these were worryingly loose, they were very, very loose, especially at the, at the bottom of the half shaft, and that's the place that takes the most pressure. They were a little bit more hand, hand tight. Now, so that's that. So now I'm going to bring these over to the vise and I'm going to get the, the drill with the wire brush going and I'm going to start taking off the nuts. It's always easy to, uh, to clean up a nut when it's on the stud. So, wire wheel. I like to pick one with short. It's 
bristles on it because it'll give a better clean up. There's no need to be shot blast in these. Now someone definitely has had these out before because you can see the vice grip marks where they were trying to probably put the, the stud in first. So this one is uh, a little bit, let's say, you know, damaged with sockets or spanners. You can't really get a socket in on them actually, to be honest, to take them off. And this one as well didn't have a spring washer. Some of these are fairly, fairly corroded. They all meant to have a spring washer. There's always some spring washers there, so I, I'm going to uh, match up a set. And I'm going to pick out the worst ones of these. Like that one there is, is, is well and truly. So I found taking this one out, this is meant to be 11 16 or so roughly between 17 and 18 mil of a nut. But to take that out, I actually had to put a 16 on. And you can see there where I actually had to tap on a, a spanner onto it. It was that wedge shape. So that's the, the stud that I'm going to put into the... One of the studs I'm going to put into the back axle. The leaf sticking out so I can line everything up. And that's definitely a nut that I'm going to replace. And a spring washer. The spring washer is uh, well and truly damaged and out of, out of place. So the likes of him... He's just going to come straight off. I don't need to go cleaning up that nut. So I'm going to get the spanner now and see if he'll come off easy enough. I had to tap on a 16 mil. Onto it. Okay. We're going to have a little bit of fun. Okay. Well and truly corroded. Jesus. I don't want to be twisting this stud too much in there. Mind you, I can cut new threads and I can always file off any damage there. Jesus. That is well and truly. Well and truly stuck on there. Be fun getting this out of the socket. I'm very surprised if this has ever taken off now. Fight me the whole way. Okay, that's scrap. And that's scrap as well. So I have to get a punch for him. It's fairly well uh, corroded. And broken, this is actually broken. This uh, spring washer. Take it nice and handy because I don't want to go making a mess of the treads. Treads are actually good. So now I have to do is loosen this off. Actually, so what I have is, I mentioned yesterday's video there, I have a selection of uh, cylinder head nuts. So these, if I'm not mistaken, are a lot heavier. These, these just be cleaned up, that's all. But they're the same 
tread, but they seem to me to be a harder nut. And uh, because they're always an oil, they're, and they're inside the engine, they seem to just fit perfect. Look at that, considering how hard that one was to take off. And they're a lovely black nut, super hard, no damage at all. So, if I have to go replace every one of them with these, I will, because that is a sheer and utter pleasure to, to work with. That is being able to screw that on there so easily. So that is that. So that's the stud I'm going to fit into the axle when I clear it up. And then what I do is I get my bag of spring washers, pour out a few, and pick the one that is right for it. That's a nice one there. So that's that. So now we have our new, our new, uh, we've basically transformed that from uh, something that was going to be very hard to work with to something that's going to be nice and easy to work with. So, a bit of damage on it there from turning in the vice, so I'm going to just hit that with the die. Uh, I suppose the best thing to do, I think that's the same tread there. If it is, it'll just go on there, yeah. Lovely. I mightn't even have to, I might just be able to tread him down. So we'll get the treads done first. That'll cut, it'll we'll only even cut them, it'll just correct them. What I love about these nuts again, they're lovely. They're rarely damaged. They haven't seen water or rust. They were all, usually always in, in oil. So that'll just recut that for us. Have to tighten up the jaw and the vice there to move it. So biggie. Okay. And I can fix the damage on the non-treaded part of the stud with a file. Put him in the vise. I have a good sharp file here. Good sharp file. Make short work of this. And I usually do this anyway because I find some of these were already out before and they had this damage on them <clears throat> and you can feel them. When you're trying to spin them out even by hand, you can feel there's tight spots on them. So. so it's no harm. So, as a man said to me who's worked, who's been working on the old vintage tractor engines for his whole working life, part of best part of uh, 60 odd year. He said it's all nuts and bolts. And when you think about it, it kind of really is off the nuts, off the bolts, off the part, overhaul it, clean it, whatever it needs, put it back on. But if you're tidy with nuts and bolts, like the next person that's going to go looking in and around behind the half shaft and see these nice nuts and washers compared to rusty, bet up things, nuts and broken spring washers. It'll look good. It'll look right. It'll be stronger and it'll be safer. Because as, as I said, two of these, or at least two of them, at the bottom, were basically hand tight. And that would have allowed axle to flex a bit. It would have put extra damage on the wheel bearing. So that's good. Lovely. So I'm going to go through one or two more of these. I'll, I'll video them if I think there's anything interesting to show. And uh, we'll see how we get on with them. There's 12 of them to do.